Jaguar is a name that is synonymous with excellence, but also racing. Jags have triumphed in pretty much every single part of motorsport. Well, except, you know, that time they tried Formula One. But out of all those mighty racing cars, which are our favorites? Well, here's a quick list to get your attention. And if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that like button and then, you know, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon and then you'll see absolutely everything that we put on YouTube at Goodwood Road and Racing. The last official Jaguar racing car before that ill-fated return to motorsport in Formula 1 was the screaming mighty XJR14. Group C died in the early 1990s when a combination of factors meant that to try and encourage manufacturers to race in both Formula 1 and sports cars, Group C cars were required to use screaming, high-revving 3.5-litre F1 engines. Rather than bringing costs down, this predictably made them spiral. However, it did mean that Group C went out in a screaming blaze of oral glory, and so did Jaguar. Designed by Ross Braun and John Piper and built by TWR, the XJR14 had a debadged version of Ford's HB V8 F1 engine in the middle, producing around 650 horsepower. While it didn't race at Le Mans, the XJR14 helped take a reasonably dominant World Sports Car Championship in 1991 for Jaguar, with Teo Fabi clinching the driver's title to boot. The following year, Peugeot finally got a handle on its V10-powered 905, and Jaguar didn't really have a hope. The programme came to an end pretty soon after that, and that was the end of Jaguar in sports cars. The XK120 was not Jaguar's first racing car, but it's probably the one that set the mark off on the right track. The original purpose of the XK120 definitely wasn't motorsport, but that didn't stop it seeing success on track. Powered by a 3.4-litre XK engine, the start of a great history, the XK120 had various power outputs depending on its carburettors, from 160 to 220 horsepower. First produced in 1948, the XK120's first foray off-road and into competition was the Silverstone Production Car Race in 1949. Three prototype XK120s turned up and proceeded to show that Jaguar might do okay with this racing lark by winning straight off, despite suffering an early collision. For 1950, the XK120 toddled off to race around the world, clinching titles at the Pebble Beach Club. It finished 1-2 at the TT in Dundrod, won by some bloke called Sterling, and triumphed at the Alpine Rally and the Coupe des Alpes. XK120s even managed to run well at Le Mans, the Targa Florio and the Mille Emilia, showing up some specially made prototype racing cars in the process. The 1950s became, well, a bit of an XK120 winfest around the globe, topped off by winning a NASCAR race in 1954. Yes, Jaguar once won a NASCAR race. Apparently, the XK120's successes made Jaguar wonder, what could it do if it did things mm, properly? The result was the Jaguar C-Type, the C very cleverly standing for competition. A car that, to put it bluntly, was as brilliant as it was absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. The XK120 provided the running gear and the lightweight tubular frame, and the basic engine was the same 3.4-litre twin-cam straight-six, but the C-Type made 205 horsepower and was clothed in that stunning aerodynamic body. I mean, just look at it. 53 C-Types were made for racing between 1951 and 1953, and so popular was it that 43 of them were sold to race by privateers. To say the C-Type was successful would be an understatement. It won its very first attempt at Le Mans in 1951 and then did it again in 1953, finishing first, second and fourth. With its lightweight aluminium body and thicker steel chassis, it outclassed its rivals, and later, with a third carburettor added for more power, the addition of disc brakes on all four wheels made the C-Type almost unbeatable. The winning car in 1953 was pedalled by Duncan Hamilton and Tony Rolt. They finished with an average speed of 105.85 miles an hour, becoming the first team ever to average over 100 miles an hour at Le Mans. After C came, well, D. The D-Type was designed with one thing in its sights, continuing Jaguar's successes at Le Mans. 
Taking the successful and now proven XK engine, Jaguar added an innovative monocoque chassis and then topped it off with some new aerodynamics derived from aircraft. The D-Type was an almost guaranteed winner. 18 factory cars and 53 customer cars were built, which explains why you can still see so many of them racing today. The D-Type started with a 3-litre version of the XK engine before eventually making its way as high as 3.8. Did it manage to continue the C-Type's successes? Yes. The D-Type won the big race in 1955, in 1956 and 1957, and the factory team didn't even enter in 56 and 57. In fact, that factory team had been disbanded for the latter two, but in 1957 D-Types filled five of the top six places at Le Mans with a Curia cost crossing the line first and second. So popular was the D-Type, the Jaguar even sold a road-going version, the XKSS. Before we move on, we'd just like to yet again say thank you very much for watching this video. We say it every time, but we'll say it again. We really, really do appreciate it. And if you do enjoy it, hit that like button. And then we'll move on to a car that you all know. Is there anything more iconic than an E-Type? And we don't mean in Jaguar terms or maybe even just the automotive world. Is there a bigger icon at all? The E was very much a road car with no real pretenses for racing, but a few did foray into motorsport and managed some success, which provoked Jaguar into building a limited run of special lightweight E-types. These cleverly named lightweight E-types had, you guessed it, the XK straight six engine, this time in 3.8 litre guise and producing around 300 horsepower. The car was inspired by a one-off low-drag coupe that Jaguar developed in 1962. It used aluminium panels which were riveted and glued to the chassis to both save weight and increase stiffness. The rear was more curved and the windscreen had a stronger rake for better aerodynamics. The interior was stripped to remove all unnecessary weight and the glass was swapped for plexiglass. Only 12 lightweight E-types were produced in period before the factory went and burnt down, taking the remaining cars with it. Lightweight E-types didn't win many major races, certainly not in factory hands, but with privateers they were more successful on both sides of the pond and today remain some of the fastest machines you'll see racing in historic motorsport. Jaguar didn't make a racing version of the XJS. It was a big, lazy GT car, not really suited for motorsport, you would think. Well, you are not Tom Walkinshaw, who, along with his TWR team, decided the XGS was actually perfect for motorsport. From 1982 to 85, TWR raced the Jaguar in the European Touring Car Championship and around the world with factory blessing. After finishing second in the European Touring Car Championship in 1982 and 83, the big gamble on a big GT finally paid off and the XJS clinched the crown in 1984. In the same year, the XJS also defeated BMW to win the Spa 24 hours in the hands of Walkinshaw himself, Win Percy and Hans Heyer, and it won by three whole laps. After that, TWR took the XJS down under to race at the Bathurst 1000 and won that too. It was powered not by an XK engine. And in fact, the Bargy XGS had double the number of cylinders, carrying a 5.3-litre V12 under the bonnet. And with TWR's work, that V12 produced 451 horsepower. The XGR12 had 750 horsepower. Yes, that's more than the screaming XGR14 that followed it. And... In part thanks to that enormous power, it finished 1-2 at the Le Mans 24 hours in 1990, meaning it took Jaguar's second victory at Le Mans in the Group C era. The XGR12 was a development of the formula that TWR had been working on for several seasons and had previously perfected with the XGR9. More on that later. It weighed just 900 kilograms, not much more than a modern Formula 1 car, and with 785 newton meters of torque, would hit 219 miles an hour at Le Mans. And that would surely make this Jaguar's greatest racing car. Well, it would, if it weren't for its predecessor. Fast forward a few years from TWR's successes in touring cars and you'll find the same team was now running Jaguar's factory sports car assault in Group C racing. For its assault 
on the World and IMSA Sports Car Championships, Jaguar built the XJR9, a sleek V12 powered sports car with a massive 7 litre engine that was pretty much a bored out version of the 5.3 litre V12 that the XJS had had. With a little rear wing and fared in wheels, this was a speed machine designed to be fast on Le Mans' fearsome Mulsanne straight. But it wasn't just a one trick pony. The XJR9 won on its very first outing, which was just the Daytona 24 hours, no biggie, and then back in Europe it won six races in the World Sports Prototype Championship and pretty much walked to the title, as well as doubling up with the big one, as Jaguar won Le Mans for the first time since the 1950s. That historic treble, the world title, Daytona 24 hours and Le Mans 24 hours in a single season must surely make the XJR9 Jaguar's greatest racing car of all time. But don't take our word for it. Which do you think is Jaguar's best racing car? Let us know in the comments below.